video on no need bread so um, I made some no need bread uh, and it turned out really well uh, and then I also made it with uh, plain flour instead of bread flour and it worked out really well so but I used my sourdough starter and I think because it was fermenting for so long I think it was the sourdough starter breaking down the uh, breaking down the flour which was the reason why uh, I didn't need to knead it. I think the long fermentation was the reason I didn't need to knead it. That's what I'm saying. So I was kind of thinking, let's do the experiment again, but let's do it with some fast acting, fast acting yeast. So I'm just gonna mix it together roughly. I'm not sure I'm gonna give it any kind of knead, but we'll see. So uh, it's about 430 grams worth of strong bread flour. 250 grams worth of water and a sachet of dried yeast so and then there's a little bit of salt but it's just over there so let's put that in the oh, I've probably done that a little bit wrong let's put all that in there we'll probably lose some of the yeast but mm, doesn't matter Give that a shot. It's, it's old yeast. I don't know if it's going to work. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't rise, I know the yeast isn't broken. And what we'll do is we'll just buy some more fresh yeast, and we will um, add. We won't waste that flour. We'll add that to a. Uh, oh no! We can do an experiment. We can just add the yeast, dried yeast, straight into there, can't we? And give it a mix around. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if it works. If it, if it, if it, not alive. It's not alive. So mix that salt in there. Yeast in there, and we've got most of the yeast that's fine, so we'll just bring it together into a into a rough ball, give it a bit of a knead so it's a little bit smooth, and then we'll just leave it for a couple of hours and see what happens. So it's summer, but it's not that warm today, so I don't know how quickly it's going to rise. I don't use fresh yeast, I couldn't tell you how quickly it takes to rise. I always remember that we used to knock it back. So we used to rise it, knock it back, and then shape it, and then rise it again. So we might have to do that. Which is what I do anyway with my bread. But you see, I'm in a rush because I'm trying to get to yoga. Which I knew I shouldn't start the video, but someone will have nicked my place in the corner so the teacher can't see me and correct my poses it looks like we need a little bit more water in that doesn't it? it looks like we need a little bit more water see that's almost needing it isn't it which is not what we're doing a little bit of extra water just to soak those bits up I'm sure I calculated it correctly although it was late when I did it last night when I weighed everything out I'm not going to need it any more than that so it's just a case of mixing it rather than kneading it so um, shower cap on leave it covered for um, not shower cap on me uh, shower cap on this just to uh, stop it from drying out and create a little bit of an atmosphere and then we'll leave it a couple of hours while I'm out, while I'm out at yoga and then do a bit of shopping it might be like two and a half hours so and then we'll see what it's like after that that looks like it's doubled in size um, it's not particularly you can tell that it isn't needed and mixed in particularly very well but let's just give it a go I'm baking bread anyway today so we have to compare it to my uh, other sourdough so I've got a little bit of flour if needs be and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna it's quite sticky it's certainly arisen it's certainly doubled in size so what my plan is, is to, it's very sticky, to 
to shake it through that a little bit of extra water that I put in it. Let's get some proper bloody bread flour. Bread flour. Rather than plain flour. Let's see what we can do. So it's really wet. So I shouldn't it it didn't need that bit of extra water in it, did it? We'll see how we go. So, the idea is that we shake it before we put it in the proving basket. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're creating it. it the top is getting stretched and pushed, pulled down to the bottom of the bottom of the dough. So ordinarily, I wouldn't use just as much flour as this to shape the dough but it's that excess amount of water that I put in it but it's okay okay so it's coming together so it's creating tension it's creating tension so it might work it's not a bad dough actually but it's not even it's kind of quite dappled in the look of it. it's uneven I can see that it is not nice and smooth like it normally is. So we'll just give it lots of. See, we do this with. I do this with my sourdough anyway. So. And I just want to find out if we can get away with not needing fast acting dough, fast acting yeast. And then we'll let it prove for. Let it double in size again. And see what happens. But. It's just not smooth. It's just not smooth, but we'll see how we go. Tuck those in like that. And then through the basket. Like that. A little bit of flour on top. It feels quite a soft dough. So uh, and normally those are kind of a little bit tight that they've got a bit of spring into them and which you can tell the, the, the gluten's been activated so shower cap on it just to stop it from drying out and stop anything getting to it and then we'll just leave that for well until it's doubled in size so uh, it was proving for about three hours so maybe another half an hour an hour but we'll see how long it takes Right, so it's had about an hour and it's risen. I can see lots of air pockets in it. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but anyway. So, let's cook this. So, the oven's on, it's on full, and I've got a cast iron pot in the oven. So, I'm going to cook it the same way that I cook my sourdough. So, Hopefully it'll just fall out of the proving basket. The pot's a bit dirty, but mm. okay. So in there, and then razor blade to see that feels really soft, doesn't it? It just feels like there's no structure to it. But anyway, we'll see how we go. So just slice that there. That will. <laughs> allow it if there's any spring in it that will allow the um, the bread to open like that so it will split open that's what the cuts for although it's going down it's like kind of spreading out isn't it down the bottom of the pan so spray on the water on the side of the bread that hasn't got the cut if you spray the water on the side that's got the cut what happens is it wants to put it in the oven it wants to seal up the cup so it won't open out. So that for 25 minutes. Full whack in the oven in the cast iron pot and we'll see how it turns out. Right, so 25 minutes, let's have a look. I will one day fix the oven door. Or probably now some buying a new cooker at some point. That will probably happen first. So oven off. And then let's have a look. Oh, I was going to do something else. Uh, Alright, okay, so 
That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. Let's put that back. In the oven out the way. While the oven's on, I was going to do something else, but I got sidetracked. So, it's not bad. It's got a little bit of a nice split, but you can tell already on the inside. So, I don't know if you can, let's just, so I don't burn my fingers. We can already see that those, it's just not as, how do I describe it? You can see in that one, you can see the stretches in the gluten. Well, I can see them. So you get these long bits of, of bread and that kind of stretches. You can't really see, uh, kind of, kind of. Whereas that's, that looks more like a cake kind of crumb. You know, it's not got nice long stretches in it. So that'll probably down to the proving. But let's, we'll let it cool. And we'll put something, we'll put it on the side like that so the air can get all around it. And then we'll have a look at it and, and compare it to one of my lovely sourdoughs. Took me ages to get those right. But anyway, there we go. Well, not those personally, um, but forever to work out how to cook bread properly. No one wants to, no one really kind of shows you exactly how to do it. You know, or variations on bread and how to make it because there's lots of different ways so you kind of have to work out your own way according to how you want to make bread and the your oven that you've got and the equipment that you've got and the quality of flour and the water that you've got and the time of year it takes a little while to kind of work it out you know so that's the, that's kind of the problem with bread tutorials online that they don't kind of take into consideration people's skill that they already have or the flour that they're going to use, or the temperature of the oven, the equipment that they've got. Um, but there you go. Anyway, so we'll let it cool. I'm ranting uh, when it's supposed to be a short -er video. The cool. Let's have a look. So let's cut into the one that's been kneaded and the uh, sourdough starter. Good, doesn't it? it? Smells brilliant. What's that? So that's the sourdough starter that's been kneaded. Um, I did do a video of comparing sourdough kneaded and non-kneaded uh, beyond the bread section. So and this is the no knead fast acting yeast. So feels alright. Cut through. It's soft. It's soft. Do you know that's not bad? That's not bad. That's not bad, all things considering. Um, it hasn't got the nice kind of split. It hasn't risen like, like those, and it's roughly the same kind of recipe. The little bit of water, the excess, a little bit of water that was that was in there won't make, won't have made that much difference. But that's not bad. It's a bit, it's a bit heavy. That feels lighter, and it'll be the same amount of the same, roughly the same amount of dough. So let's give it a taste. It's not bad, you know, for something that I didn't need at all. We just shaped it and um, and what we call it and and mixed it in together. That's not a bad loaf. That's not a bad loaf. I don't think it will taste of much. It's kind of, it's, although it's more cakey, it's more like a, like a cake kind of crumb to it. So, no, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. There's just not any kind of flavour to it. As opposed to a sourdough where there's loads of flavour in a sourdough and that's down to the, the flavour of the starter that you use and the long fermentation process. So, it's not a bad loaf. It's not a bad loaf. It's certainly better than I thought it was going to be. So, you don't have to knead. And it kind of... So it kind of goes to show that a lot of the 
the rise in the dough and the structure of the of the of the dough and, the, and of the bread is down to the shaping of the dough so it's not just in the kneading process it's also down it, a part of it is into the shaping of the dough so when we're when we're the motion is to pull the top of the dough down and tuck it underneath so you kind of do that kind of creating tension it's kind of like a, that type of you're doing that really and it's pulling down the top of the dough and stretching the dough and tucking it underneath that's the kind of motion that you can do it so that has got a bigger part to play in it than you actually think you think it's just to create tension and to make the nice split in the dough but also it's creating that as well so it's a little bit of kneading so it's a little bit of further kneading um, so but it's not it's not bad it's not a bad loaf you know, um, we'll take a slice of, we'll take a slice of this, and then we can kind of compare it. But it's wanting to fall to bits. It's not tearing. It's just see this. There's more to it. You know, there's more stretch in that, like that, whereas that just wants to break. There's more stretching that and tastes loads of bar and tastes loads of bar so interesting experiment um i probably could have found the answers online but where would the fun be in that you know we've I had a question tried something out it's answered some of my questions it, and it and it's taught me something as well which is really important and therefore that's success.